it soon became clear that the Nazis right, had a secret space program at Pienemunde and Nordhausen. The Hannibal craft utilized point. alternative propulsion systems such as Vril power, possibly back engineered from recovered crashed flight sources. The interior of an entire mountain was excavated to accommodate a secret space facility which was no less than one million square feet. It was here at Nordhausen, in top secret underground bases, that a huge number of experimental rocket ships and circular flying disks were developed. The prototype V-7 craft was powered by engines manufactured by BMW. The V-7 used 12 BMW 028 engines, which were powered with helium. Radical fuselage shapes were developed, which would later lead to the emergence of stealth aircraft and the cruise missile. Werner von Braun and his team closely studied photographs of UFOs, which had been photographed in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Russia. These unidentified flying objects inspired the development of Nazi flying discs. After World War II, the underground base at Nordhausen was rebuilt in the Mojave Desert, a place we now know as Area 51. We have been given patents from leading German manufacturing companies, including Juha, Krupps, and BMW, which proved beyond all reasonable doubt that Hitler considered the Nazi secret space program a top priority. And more than 15 billion Deutschmarks were spent developing craft of all shapes and sizes. Secret memos from SS officers revealed that Werner von Braun and Hitler both believed that there were alien civilizations in the universe. And it was their intention to not only conquer all nations on planet Earth, but to also colonize the moon. By 1939, the SS had already built its RFC-5, the first long-distance aircraft measuring more than 65 feet and with the mysterious name Haunibu-1. Under tight security, the Haunibu-1 made its maiden flight in all probability in August of 1939. Documents show that by 1941, the British had already found out about these top-secret SS experiments. My background includes remote sensing technology and the exploration of the UFO phenomena. Over the years, I've had the privilege of being a friend and colleague of the late American Naval Admiral Dolphardi, who was instrumental in bringing many of the German scientists to the United States at the end of World War II. As many of you know, there was an executive order given by President Truman, August 1945, August 1545, and in March 1946, the state's naval war committee authorized the collection of German materials relating to experiments of high technology. The first second and the third prototypes of which we see here represent the most commonly seen and observed spacecrafts worldwide since 1947. The documentation and personal experiences with many of the German fuel experts, however, suggest that as early as 1935, the Germans were aware that there was life technology in the universe and were at least indirectly aware of the possibilities of building their own saucer crafts which would make them basically the first to have opened the window to contact with other areas of higher evolutionary intelligence now do it towards the end of 1942 the department SSE-4 allegedly began work on a new improved version of the Haunibu UFO, the Haunibu-2. This drawing shows the basic layout, including the power plant and fuselage. The exterior shape could vary. The dimensions of the Haunibu-2 varied from craft to craft, from an overall length of between 85 and 100 feet 